Welcome to Season 4, Episode 8 of the Gateway Geeks Podcast. Join Sarah, Chris, Joe, Aaron, and Wendy as we discuss Hamilton, Old Guard, and the Omegaverse. Definitely don't Google that one. Now over to our nerds in their sacred community of pop culture. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is Episode 8 of Season 4 of the Gateway Geeks Podcast. And this time we have with us, I'm Joe, and... I will. I'm Aaron. There we go. I'm, I'm Wendy fixing my name because it still keeps coming up with my old name on it. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. I'm Sarah Jane Connor. I'm Chris. Yes. Good job, guys. Um, so this time, we're gonna, this time we watched a couple interesting, actually good movies. So that was the nice yeah. change. <laughs> we watched um, Hamilton and we watched uh, The Old Guard. The old Guard. And there are a few things we actually have kind of like our intro section that I think may be fruitful. So I don't even remember how this came up. And I think I'm going to blame you, Aaron, because I think yeah. you posted a link about the Omega. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I said, hey, 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 have either of you heard about this uh, Buster Cluck? Um, yeah. and, a, and a link to Lindsay Ellis's uh, br brilliant summation of this ridiculous copyright uh, Mm -hmm. uh, small press kerfuffle. Who wants to explain? Oh, I can see uh, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so listen, how deep in the paint do we want to get on this? Because I, I actually know a lot about this. I mean, maybe we could just like briefly summarize what it is. <laughs> Why don't you just start with what ABO is, Sarah? I don't know that I want to explain that. I <laughs> That's actually what Megan was going to do if she were here. My wife was supposed to join us. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Meg knows about it, yeah. Well, I mean, you, 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 can, you can summarize it in loose and vague terms like uh, oh, fanfic I? erotica. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a major understatement. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like really specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And I'll, in the show notes, I'll actually link the Lindsay Ellis um, mm -hmm. video. Yeah. It's really good. But. Yeah. And like, honestly, she um, gives a very vague overview of what it actually is, which makes sense because that's not really what the video is about. But like, yeah, uh, yeah it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. If so you watch it on a oh what's that service that she that she does at Nova or not Nova uh, Nebula PBS if, no if you if you watch it on Nebula um, it's uncensored oh okay. Wait, the readings <laughs> oh the readings of oh, yeah so it, okay so my understanding it would from be really like, funny if I just gave like a full like very graphic breakdown and then you just like bleeped most of it out <laughs> I wish I had a balloon. <laughs> oh no 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 no! And it would be great if, if at the beginning, Sarah, you just picked up like a giant stack of Lindsay Ellis and other novels and just like stacked them on your desk. Like, well, let me tell you what this shit is. About. <laughs> so, I okay. Like, let me just. When, this is the first time I watched the video. I was vaguely aware of. Like, I've known people who have been into, uh, like, furry fandom, which this is not that. No. no. So that's that's what I assumed it was at first, but doesn't it's decidedly really... furless. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's weirdly unrelated. I mean, well, it can be, but like <laughs> furry porn is an entirely different. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not inherently that. Yeah. Like yeah. there there can be overlap, but like no, it's its own thing. I think we should just call this podcast. Joe's mom don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we, we, we've, we've been talking. We've been talking. Oh God! Does your mom this. listen to this podcast? She does, and she frequently <laughs> sends me notes. Believe it or not. <laughs> Gee, all my friends said was tell everybody else to get a damn microphone because you can't hear them. Yeah. 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 Well, we got. Uh, we, we've been talking all around this thing. I mean, what what this began with was you have this sub sub genre of uh, fanfic erotica that has that's partially based on the since discredited disproven um alpha male uh wolf alpha beta study. omega yeah yeah right yeah. um and, and, first and, and of all it's based on bad science so there's yeah, that. <laughs> based, based on bad science and it's uh, it, it's this it's this shared world where that's applied to human human people and there's other things like 
guys can get pregnant apparently and um Empreg yeah. is Empreg is his oldest star uh, Star Trek fanfic from the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah but, but think... um, and and so what um like 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 many authors before them, you know, this a couple of authors said, Hey, this is really popular right now. I can make money. I'm gonna do the thing, I'm going to change it from fanfic to the uh, Trope, tropey, um, tropey, but not actually legally actionable uh, by like changing uh, an IP like Batman to Mega Man or whatever. We, um, yeah. we yeah. file off the serial numbers. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, that's a really uh, interesting thing. Oh, we should have had them watch After for this. It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah. fuck. Uh oh. <laughs> so, but should we? Because that's mean. Know. No. Please, no, no more. So, so uh, <laughs> the, wait, I have to say, I have, let, let me introduce uh, this element of it that I think was interesting. So there's the, the part where um, Lindsay Ellis is talking about how originally most of this specific genre was um, like male, male, like gay. Okay, gay. yes, that is the part that's interesting. Yes. yes. Because then, yeah. genuinely, like this is not be, being glib or anything. I do not know what the point of MF Omegaverse fiction is. Right. And I so, don't understand why you would write that. <laughs> right. Except the, my takeaway was the reason, like, that's how she decided she was going to make money off of it. Where she's like, I guess? Oh, like, maybe there aren't enough, like, gay people who are into this. Maybe I'll just make it for, st I, I don't know. But I mean, that, I, thought that, I thought that was a very, like, like, you talk about cultural appropriation a lot of times and people kind of go a little too far with it sometimes. But this is like literally it's appropriating a culture to make money off of it, uh, right. by, making it hetero by making it heteronormative. I mean, that's kind of like- my Yeah, I don't think that's culturally appropriative. It's it's definitely shitty and heteronormative, but like, yeah. yeah. So the bread and butter of these people is who buys books in airports, right? <laughs> right. I mean, oh, like, no, not, not for this. This is like who buys shit on their Kindle. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's like, more what I meant is like, the, the, what I meant is the version of that now is who's sitting around bored with Wi Fi and a Kindle, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it used to be like the Barnes and Noble at the airport, and like that's where this sort of like romance novel sort of thing would really make the money. Now, uh, it's miniograph, miniograph zines, baby, miniograph yeah. zines. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but but what 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 happened was, um, you know, one one author, uh, one, one popular author in this subgenre was making money, and uh, and apparently like her publicist says, hey, there's this other author who's kind of doing your thing, kind of doing your thing, and she's like, well, I can't have that because that's going to dilute my uh, my money stream. Um, okay, no, 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 no. You're saying what she alleged happened. Yes, right. That yeah. is not what happened. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was like, hey, I have a rival. I yeah. want you to slay them for me. It was yeah. weaponizing. It was trying to weaponize copyright. And right. It was a thing that never would have flown with like an actual real publishing house. But mm -hmm. this happened to be like, oh shit, I should have looked it up. Well, it's that, it's that, that super that. notorious publishing house. Yeah. Oh yeah, what are they called? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like crazy exploitative and yeah. yeah. There's a lot of those popping popping up in the romance genre Indeed. lately because there's a lot of money to be made. Yes. In the romance genre right now. Yeah. Right. Ro romance, and this, and this, romance and YA are the top grossing right now because mm -hmm. the world is on fire and people want yeah. to be about people being happy. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and th this this led to uh, a lot of uh, internet copyright takedown notices being issued. Uh, ba bad, uh, I'm sorry, bad faith uh, copyright mm -hmm. ta takedown to take to take this rival this rival author's work off of digital platforms like Amazon and um, Nook if that's still a thing and so on. It is. Um, yeah, not that Joe has any experience with DMCA takedown notices. We got a DMCA <laughs> takedown for one of our. What episode was that even, Chris? Oh, it was the know. episode where uh, where Chris showed us the uh, the 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 uh, '90s CGI of oh, the Blacklist finale. Right, from Blacklist, and I mean, like, <laughs> here's the thing: there are very few professions outside of lawyer that know anything about copyright, and librarian, luckily, just happens to be one of those. Yeah. So I wrote like the most 
just it was it was a little excessive but then somewhere in there i was also like also this sucks so you should just be happy with the publicity because i like to get that <laughs> that you know, big, big <laughs> yeah. artist knife in there uh-huh. <laughs> but um but yeah so the speaking of that the thing i found really interesting about this was just or about the the, the video which you should all watch the Lindsay mm-hmm. Ellis video is she actually talks very she's very accurate describing uh how how the digital millennium copyright act works because mm-hmm. she she notes that you know there are a lot of first of all there are a lot of things where it's like yes technically you are breaking the spirit of this law but who is going to sue you and it, it's it's all like a yeah. risk assessment thing it's like like for example there technically when you submit a takedown um I forget what it's called, not an application, but like when you submit, when you're trying to have someone else's stuff taken down and you submit that to YouTube or Mm -hmm. whatever, you're technically agreeing legally. You're saying, this is definitely something that I own, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And if you're lying about that, you could technically be countersued. But the thing is, if you're, if you're doing that to someone like us, for example, do any of us have the money to go to court yeah do that no we'll just say fuck it we'll take it down and that's kind of why that works <laughs> that's, why yeah. that, that's why everyone's afraid of disney i mean you know oh god yeah yeah i mean yeah. you know i think i've mentioned it on the podcast before but sarah and i have like six episodes of an unreleasable podcast we recorded <laughs> yeah that we very quickly realized there was no possible way to edit it in a way that it was not illegal harry potter audiobooks yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and the thing is, is a lot of that takes place by bots nowadays. The uh, the actual yeah. Hugo Awards, the last uh, Worldcon that was held in Chicago, the actual live stream of the Hugo Awards was taken down by YouTube bots for showing a clip of Doctor Who that they had the BBC's written permission to play because yeah. it had been nominated for an award. Yeah, mm-hmm. but by the time they could get a hold of a human being over Labor Day weekend on a Sunday night at YouTube, they had yeah. chopped off the broadcast of the Hugo Awards to people yeah. to an audience around the world. Well, right, yeah. and the reason the reason they employ those automated processes is because that's the only way that like YouTube avoids liability. Like that's mm-hmm. part of the whole thing. But, but it was yeah. a huge. They ended up had what they ended up doing was they were able to restore the that part of the broadcast and they broadcast the whole thing on a later date yeah, yeah. but, but it yeah. took them like hours to get a hold of a human being and we're like this is an actual active awards podcast that has suddenly gone Blip. Yeah. Yep. and we yeah. like we have it in writing from the bbc it's okay <laughs> will you stop yeah. we're trying to, to give them an award yeah. <laughs> relative to this whole conversation funny enough Lindsay ellis uh lost a hugo award for mm. her Lord of the Rings videos for best, uh, what's it called? Best. It's related. always best related work. Best related yeah, best work. Best related yeah. work is where you shove all the things that are vaguely fanish but don't actually fit in a box. Yeah. yeah. She, she lost it to uh, AAO3 and she couldn't even argue because she got her start as a, a Phantom of the Opera yeah. fiction writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like she basically lost to like the concept of fan fiction. So yes, like it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Do you know who else has been nominated for a Hugo leading into our uh, actual topic? Yeah. David Diggs, who played Jefferson and uh, Lafayette in Hamilton, is part of a group <laughs> called Clippings. Oh, and yeah. they did a recording based on the African-American idea that the slaves that were dumped overboard during the Middle Passage have an underground, uh, underwater civilization. Oh. Uh, and it was called The Deep and it was nominated as a best related work for the Hugo Awards. I remember that. So, yeah, so one of the stars of Hamilton does have a, a one of the a shiny little silver pin because he was a Hugo Award nominee. Yeah, I love <laughs> David Diggs. Like, oh, he's so good. Like, honest there, to God, his favorite thing to do when he has extra money laying around from things like Hamilton is to uh, buy student debt and forgive it. <laughs> like, that's one of his <laughs> hobbies. One of the running jokes about the fact that the Hugos ran ridiculously long this year for a variety of reasons, people were looking at ways to shorten it up and somebody said, well, make David Diggs the, uh, the MC. <laughs> <laughs> and the award goes to. He's the best. Oh, he's great. So Hamilton, um, <laughs> have all of you seen it multiple times? Uh, yeah. Actually no, only once. once. Yeah. 
Okay. But I've seen a variety of material around it, and I have had yeah. the soundtrack for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, so I've I, listened to the soundtrack um, on pretty consistent rotation on my Amazon list for five years. Yeah. When it first went big, they gave it away on free for for free at Google Play to publicize the show. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I um saw it on Disney Plus, but I mean, this really makes you want to actually, you know, eventually see it in a theater because it looks yeah. incredible. In yeah. That yeah. For sure. So what did you guys think? I think we kind of already have some sense of that. It's high yeah. art. I mean, it's it's yeah. part of the American canon. The one so, thing I love about it is that it, it Lin Manuel Miranda is the ultimate theater kid. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just his energy, his brain, everything. The the there's certain information in his mind that he because he made this for like a like a Broadway Broadway like an off Broadway audience more than anything mm-hmm. and um, it opened at the People's Theater actually which is where a chorus line opened yes mm, yep it this this work exists it, it, this is not the first musical about the founding fathers that would arguably yeah. be the most famous one being 1776 mm-hmm. which no one has seen. Like, like oh, us fucking nerds know it, but like for the most part, like mo- the, 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 the people, 99% of the people seeing Hamilton have never heard of 1776, mm-hmm. right? This, so much of this cr- is it exists like in dialogue with 1776. Oh, yeah. big time, yeah. Yeah. Sit down, I, John, you fat mother. It's the, it's a direct reference to Yes. I, my my favorite part was that having watched Hamilton's America, which is which is on PBS, and I do recommend it. It's findable on YouTube. Oh, it intersperses uh, interviews with the cast and uh, on location at the various places like Hamilton's house and all the mm-hmm. various places and interviews as the show was being planned. Mm-hmm. And basically, what happened was Lin Manuel took Hamilton the biography on vacation with him mm-hmm. for like a beach read. And decided to read it and he's like this is my next show it's a it's a hip-hop story and so when he got a call because he was still doing in the heights at the time Mm -hmm. he got a call from the white house saying we're doing an evening of spoken word about the american experience do you have anything to add and he's like i got a hot 16 about alexander hamilton and everyone's like okay then yeah (laughs) and then it went viral and people are like holy crap this is this is something yeah. And I was I was dubious because I'm an old school theater kid and I was my experience with hip hop and rap in the past was not positive. Um, so I was just like, you know, it's a gimmick show. Uh, and then I started hearing more and more about it and the lang- the use of language and the yeah. layers of language in this. You can watch this multiple times and get different things out of it every time. Yeah. yeah. And there's, uh, there's a, can I just there's have a, a real nostalgia moment for a minute? Everyone, you can find almost all of it on YouTube of that night of poetry at the White House hosted by the Obamas. Yep. I think you can just sit there and remember that that's the sort of thing that used to happen in the White House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They, did, they also did a presentation where um, uh, most of the cast went, spent the day at the White House with a, a group of students. Uh, and mm-hmm. apparently, uh, the first lady actually tweeted out to Lin Manuel, "Lin Manuel, uh, Alexander Hamilton, we are waiting in the East Wing for you." <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever seen? Um, it's it's called "To Begin the World Over Again." I think it's a play. It's okay. about it's about Thomas Paine. Yes. It's like it's it's very. I mean, I thought it was interesting, but it's literally a one man show of this guy of. Uh, for those of you who don't, Thomas Paine, if you don't know, if you're listening, it's just like a, it's on YouTube. Let me check. We well, hold these is. truths to be self-evident that I'm an agreed. He, he he was very well known. He was kind of like an Alexander Hamilton sort of character in that he was very well known for his writing, and he was like a well-known pamphleteer. He died penniless, of course, but he's kind of um, another important founding father or whatever. Yeah. But he oh wrote the God, rights of man. Oh my God, that play was dry. No singing, just just one dude just like standing up, you know, sitting at a table with candles on it, standing up, looking off into the distance and reciting things. And at first I was afraid Hamilton was going to have some element of that, but obviously it doesn't. No. So I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah. Really being, being sung through does really help the pace of Hamilton, I think, because it is yeah. a long show. 
And I think it would be much longer if there were like breaks for dialogue, honestly. Yeah. There are 46 songs in the show because Alexander Hamilton was 46 years old when he died. <laughs> like, the whole I am the theater nerd. I will be participating <laughs> on this this evening. Yeah. No, okay. the whole thing is just, it's, you know, I love In the Heights very much. Well, again, I, I have not been to, you know, I have not seen the show like every other like poor Midwesterner. I have the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Very much it, looking forward to the movie someday coming out. Uh, it mm -hmm. was on PBS Great Performances. If you get the PBS Passport, you can in fact stream it. Nice. So you have to become a member of your local PBS station at at least five bucks a month. Already done. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cheapest, cheapest and best streaming service you can get is become a member of PBS and get PBS Passport. Yes. Nice. There's some great stuff on there. They did film into the they did film in the Heights for great performances. Yeah. Nice. nice. I missed that. Oh yeah. One. Just great performances alone would be worth it, but like PBS does such good documentaries. Yeah. 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 Well, a lot of this background, the stuff that I have about from Hamilton is like I said, from the the, mm -hmm. the documentary that they did, which tied it all in together with how it came about, how it got out of mm -hmm. ridiculously out of hand, how it, the first ideas were there. Um, and I think that one of, there's an author, I'll put this out there, there, there was an author, the author of the Hamilton book, who is quoted in this documentary by saying, Lin-Manuel has done something equivalent to Shakespeare. He has taken the language of the people and elevated it to poetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would argue that that is entirely true for the yeah. music of this show. He's taken yeah. the dry old guys in the white wigs in the pictures and made them sound like people you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With all their flaws and all their shooting off at the mouth and all their oh my god horrible arguing yeah yeah you know to point out we keep mentioning it around it it was ron chernow's alexander hamilton biography. yeah yes mm -hmm. yeah. i couldn't remember his name yeah. which you know to be fair he's done fine because he's gotten a lot of publicity <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah as soon as the show went yeah his his it, it went up yeah but oh. the 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 lin-manuel was attracted to the story because he saw it as an immigrant story um, mm -hmm. you, because you can argue, you know, pro or con, you know, there, you can, you can use an, a piece of art to argue about everything. Well, basically but, the, he was reading the story in Puerto Rico and the whole story was reminding him of his father. Yeah, his yeah. father's from mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, came to the U.S. Yeah. in college. So and he's like, the, this is a hip hop story. This is my home. dad's story. Yeah. 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 Except with longer hair <laughs> and tighter pants. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it was the 70s, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't be sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, I, like I said, I, I, I think it, it would be nice to have some legislation decided by a rap battle in somebody's living room. I, I think that would only benefit <laughs> yeah. our country. Um, but oh the, thi the things I liked, and I'm going to be pulling, out, again, nerd stuff, the same thing when we get to Old Guard nerd stuff about this show. This show has so many layers. Um, mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the character of the bullet? Mm -hmm. There is a character in the ensemble. Mm -hmm. Basically, she's nicknamed the angel of death. Every time she interacts with a character, they die afterwards. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a duel, she's the one holding the bullet. Mm -hmm. All the background care, all the swing characters and the ensemble characters in the show, when the show first starts, everyone is clothed in sort of a parchmenty color. Mm -hmm. And when they start to become part of the story, they put on a colored coat or a colored mm -hmm. dress. And that is them stepping into the story. The whole first song is about Alexander putting on a coat, going to New York, and then putting on a different coat. Yeah. That's going on in the background. And they're using that to emphasize stepping into the story. Mm -hmm. There's also a rotating platform in the stage. Watch the show and see who never except once at the end of the show is ever moved by the rotating stage, by the, the force of history. Mm -hmm. Everyone else gets shoved around at some point. Many places, Hamilton is walking against it, or he'll walk with it for a bit and get off. He does not set foot and be moved on that until the final duel scene, when history has caught up with him mm -hmm. and he's lost control. Yep. So there's there's all kinds of fun stuff in the show about that. Yeah. But fundamentally, it's also a guy who had a sh shitty start 
and wrote himself a life and kept writing and kept writing maybe when he should have stopped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, what I think also needs to be deeply appreciated about Hamilton, and this is also just me as like a 90s garbage kid who grew up with like, you know, 90s rap is, um, what a good rapper Lin Manuel Miranda is. Yeah. In, yeah. In an era where that's dying, like the fucking yeah. SoundCloud mumblecore kid, like fucking. Um, <laughs> um, oh, who's the who's the incredibly boring dude with the face tattoo? Um, it's edgy um, shit, I can't remember his. I can't, oh, there's one guy in particular. Just, I'll type it. Hang on. But it's the the idea is that again, I don't have, I I didn't have the greatest opinion of rap and hip hop before this because most of my experience with it was very misogynistic, very violent, very mm. sexist. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, okay, sure, you're gonna do a, a whole musical. When they hired Lynn Manuel to write the songs for Moana, they said, Do you have anything else you're working on? And he's like, I got a Broadway show about hip hop musical about Alexander Hamilton. And they're like, You'll you'll be available. There, there, there won't be a problem. <laughs> Poor guy ended up having to FedEx in the songs uh, like the day before recording because Hamilton just blew up. We yeah. could do a whole other episode about the making of Moana and all the insanity that went on there. Oh yeah, that was wild. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, 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 Taika Waititi was originally yep. to develop that whole project. And uh, he had three stipulations. When, and he wrote an entire script and he had a whole treatment and everything. Yeah. Wildly different story. Yeah. He stipulated that there would be no coconut jokes, that um, there would be uh, no communing with spirits, and that there would be, oh, what was the third one? Like all three just completely blown out of the water. It's like, oh yeah, and no, uh, no savage mysticism. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, all that obviously completely. I think he still has a, a writer credit on the whole thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. yeah, the original story had much more to do with her competing with her brother to be the, the, the chief. And eventually they were like, I don't know, what if her magical grandmother sends her on a quest to fight coconuts? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, we, we, we could, we could do a movie. whole show on... Disney missteps, like for example, uh, their their latest M Mulan remake. Well, I was, yep. I was not expecting that to be such a miserable failure. Like I haven't seen it, but it seems oh, like it. oh, I have. Have you not been following this story for the last three years? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's been ugly. Yeah, I mean, I know I know that there was all kinds of crazy shit about just just like like with the Taika Waititi thing, where people are just jumping. This off. Mulan was supposed to come out over a year ago like, yeah. when they could have released it and uh, the Disney execs called th this is this is like a Justice League level <laughs> problem where uh, Disney looked at the first cut of this movie and said this is unwatchable yeah. and then the Chinese cast of the movie kept getting into the news for being uh, like very Hong pro Kong Hong Kong crackdown no yeah. pro Hong Kong crackdown yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. on and, the side of that. And in the credits, they thank a regional governor where uh, the the primary industry in that area is internment camps. Uyghur slave labor. Yep. Yep. Oh. So yeah, it's super problematic before it even starts. Yeah. They made this. Also, uh, it was the production team was entirely white, white. people. Yeah. Yeah. It was written oh, yeah, and produced yeah, they, all they, by they, white they, people. Yeah, they, they they've turned uh, Milan into a uh, into a force wielding Jedi. More more, uh, mm -hmm. more from what I've been told. Well, so, like that, they, basically they just tried to turn it into a uh, god damn it. What do they call that 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 wire work style? Oh, wire foo, like wire foo, wire foo. Yeah, it's, it's Beijing. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Chinese name for it too, but like they, which is fine. Like that's a take if you're going to go down that road. And they didn't want to make it a musical because. <sighs> musicals don't translate like musicals yeah. don't do well in yeah china. and like they're really really aiming this for a china release and so they hired like every asian actor in la and a bunch of chinese actors that those are yeah. be well known and 
It's absolutely joyless. Um, I've heard a lot of interesting breakdowns about it. Like, oh, good, this is yet another uh, white writer trying to interpret the Chinese concept of family honor. Yeah. Even yeah. The, it's it's even being panned in the Chinese press. Yeah, right. even, even yeah. So it's it, it's just in general a waste of a yeah. waste of film and a waste of time. How yeah. did, how did but the, uh, going, how did the one terrible, um, oh my God, Matt Damon movie do in China? Oh, the the wall. The wall. Pretty did, well, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, because it, it was it was all spectacular. What it about just War, what about explosive Warcraft? things? What about Warcraft did did very well. We're See, not killed in China. So I'm just That's why it, a pattern yeah. here <laughs> is really what I'm wondering. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to, it, the big, big explosions and, you know, right. big, big stunts do well. Yeah. Because Fucking after did well in China. I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> well, but again, a lot of that is things, things like action and things like stunts and things like simple heroes journeys do can can translate cross culturally. Yeah. Yeah. More complicated things you get mired down into what does that actually mean? And that's where this production seems to have gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. yeah. But getting back to a production that went horribly, horribly right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that said though, there was, and I think maybe it was just Chris and I talking about this, but there has been uh some criticism of Miranda for getting involved in like some kind of um it was like a Puerto Rico. Yeah, he took the production thing. to Puerto Rico for a benefit, but the problem is he did it in in Puerto Rico, and you know the people with the money in the Puerto Rico, as opposed to the actual people. Right. It was. It was. It, he could be criticized for meaning yeah. well but doing it badly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So which, there, there, there is, there is definitely that. Which I, I think is something that in this particular political moment, it would be nice if everyone kind of took a step back and just thought about like. What do we do after we criticize? Because I mean, like with Lin Manuel Miranda, I understand the criticism. I read, you know, I read about it and stuff, and I get that what he did was kind of stupid. But it's also like he, it isn't as like there are varying degrees of fucking up. Yeah, that yeah. We, have to, and, that we have to acknowledge here, and you have to so, acknowledge that the, the intent was we need to raise money. It's right. just like I said, things 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 were yeah. executed badly. Yeah. And the, Lynn manuel has one club in the bag, right? He is the theater guy. And his people, he looked at Puerto Rico. It's like, oh my God, what can I do? We all look at problems from the perspective of our own skills. And he's like, I have this hit show. It makes a lot of money. It's, it's about, you know, uh, a, a person from the Caribbean. I'll just take this giant expensive production to Puerto <laughs> Rico and we'll raise money. It's not yeah. on its face a bad idea. Unless you're like, I don't know, someone who works in logistics for a living and you go, holy shit, this is a terrible idea on every uh, <laughs> or, or the whole point of raising money is that there isn't money and resources in Puerto Rico. So maybe we should do it in some place else and send the money there. Yeah. Yeah. Would have made more sense. Yeah. But yeah. again... We're, we're armchair quarterbacking. The guy meant well, and he screwed. Right. And, and yeah. that's, that's a perennial issue in any art world sort of thing where you have a bunch of, and not this isn't necessarily true of Miranda, but like in St. Louis, you have a bunch of very wealthy people who don't really want to get down with the poors and ask them what they want. They just want to feel good about helping the poors. And so yeah. they'll like have some giant art show that no one comes to and then it's like, okay, that's my good deed for for the day. Here's your thousand dollars. That should last you all year. Tiny art. Yeah. So, yeah. But you know, I as said, you know, it, when when what you have is a really big money making hammer, right? You, you mm -hmm. start looking for nails, and that that seemed to be the thing to do at the time because again, the just the universal popularity of this show, the show that you know. Everybody was like, "Yeah, sure, this yeah, again, a hip hop musical about Alexander Hamilton." Nobody even, he's, yeah. which which he's on one he's on one of the dollar bills, right? He's on one of those. That's yeah. all anybody knew. And the fact that he and Burr shot each other, I went, um, I being from New Jersey, I went on a field trip to where they shot each other. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can we briefly talk about um, how uh, 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 Michael Bay is involved in the popularity of the knowledge of that duel? <laughs> Oh God! Yes! Oh my God! Yeah! Okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bathroom break. You guys go ahead. I'll be right back. <laughs> so 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 tell tell us of Michael Bay uh, and 
Because, I mean, I, I grew up in New Jersey, and the du the Hamilton Burr duel was one of the things that was prominently featured in the stuff we were supposed to learn in school about the revolution. Mm -hmm. So, see, yeah, around here, you, you don't. Because no. it's just like it, 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 everything's just, legal in New Jersey. Yeah, it's, yes. it's this fun <laughs> fact that, like, oh, hey, do uh, you know the vice president of the United States one time murdered a guy? Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't really know how to handle that. Um, yeah. Which is funny, that is the first, but not the last time, a sitting vice president shot someone in the head while in office. Yeah. yeah no, no, you know, St. Louis, the big uh, elementary school field trip was the, uh, is the Dred Scott uh, case. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's our claim to fame. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, the yeah. only the only reason that all of us know like who shot Aaron Burr was because of a Got Milk ad from the '90s that Made Michael, Bay, Michael Bay directed. Bay. Yeah, because that was in like the early '90s when Michael Bay was doing commercials. I, was, I would show it to you, but we're gonna get another DCMA takedown if I do. Yeah. <laughs> That could just be our brand, DCMA takedowns. Yeah, like, you, know you guys could have all the money we make off of this podcast. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it shocks no one to know that Michael Bay mostly was known for making music videos and TV commercials. Yeah, like, yeah, like he did the the video for Meatloaf's "I'd Do Anything for Love." He oh, did man. all the Victoria's Secret commercials in the '90s yep. with the Angels. That was all him. And then um, once again, once again, according to Lindsay Ellis, being like the best and worst example of auteur theory. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! If you, honest to God, Lindsay Ellis, to get back to her for one second, is probably the only film academic who's done real serious work on Michael Bay. Yes. And, 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 and Transformers in general. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and like her, go back and watch the whole plate. It was an incomplete series that she started and then abandoned because of like toxic backlash to it. But it's pretty yeah. amazing as she goes oh. through and breaks down the elements of the Transformers movies. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. the fun thing, you guys are all talking about, this was your school field trip. It, in the United States, history lessons are largely dictated on a state level. Um, yeah. The, the, the influence of the Texas school board, uh, school book, council has a great deal to do with it because that's what they they influence what gets printed but yeah. uh as far as uh people in europe find this fascinating that you can have such very different curricula in mm -hmm. the different states um so that's why something like hamilton you know i i'm again was more familiar with it because that was like you know that was the park down the street kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Like so if, that's a huge thing in the U.S. is there's very different requirements for and sources for teaching history and what gets covered. If you yeah. grow up in Illinois, the, pre, the history of the United States is the revolution, George Washington, some shit happens. You're going to spend six weeks on Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then like Not the Civil War. Abraham Just Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. We spent a lot of time on the Revolutionary War because also another place that we didn't go for a field trip but was an easy day trip was uh, the, why am I blanking on the name of the Winter Quarters, Washington's Winter Quarters? Valley Forge. Valley yes. Forge. Yeah, everybody knows yeah. about that. There's, that's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a day trip from where we are. Yeah. So yeah. we spent a lot of time on the Revolution and a little bit on the French and Indian War and Wars of 1812, because that's what happened where we were. And then, mm -hmm. like, the Civil War was maybe, like, a month in See, Oh, God, we did so much stuff on the Civil, so much War. Civil War. And you know what's really interesting, too? And maybe in New Jersey, you... how much did you learn about uh, Kazmir Pulaski real quick? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> we learned a lot about Lafayette, oddly enough. We learned a lot about Kazmir Pulaski. We had a, yeah. It was so it, it should be pointed out that you know he Chicago, has a day in Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Chicago he has, a day. has more people of Polish descent than Warsaw. Yep. <laughs> yep. And that is the only reason every kid in Illinois learns all about Kazimir Pulaski, the yeah. only uh, famous pole of the American. <laughs> and so, but, but speaking of that, so what about in Missouri? Um, just what I can tell from the top down is it seems like there's more focus on like westward expansion. 
Yeah. Yeah, Obviously, for like, sure. Jesse James, I guess. Having um, been to the the, muse, the the museum that's the new museum that's under the arch that I was wandering around going, oh, okay, yeah. and this is the part where we don't talk about the people who lived here already, who, who mm -hmm. showed up. <laughs> yeah. yep. There's a very, very, lots of alighting going on over there. And, and yeah. it, it's so interesting too, Wendy, because we I had um, an intern for about three months, two years ago, and one of the things I had her work on was just like a web page about all of the indigenous groups that were like had once lived in Missouri mm -hmm. and she made this this web page and like within two years it's gotten like no joke like 75,000 hits which mm -hmm. is crazy because it's just some little it's because there's not a lot out there on it in yeah Missouri. You My know, Girl Scout troop was named after a, a local Indian tribe, and so we had some background of, of that the, for the yeah. Lenape. And also, a lot of names in New Jersey are named after uh, various uh, Indian tribes or Indian words. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up just uh, the next town over was Hohokus, which was yeah. the name of the tribe. So yeah. there's there's a lot a lot of those tongue twister names that you see in you know it, Poughkeepsie things like that yeah. are, are are originally Indian words. Right, Illinois. So it's a, yeah. yeah, it's a little <laughs> yeah. more. It's a, it's a little closer to the surface because we spent a lot more time on that era, um, you know. Because again, we're, we're we, we we they do the pilgrims and then they kind of move on. But yeah, well, we spent a lot of time on the revolution. Yeah. Um, but I yeah I have no idea who Alexander Hamilton was because frankly the idea of spending my time reading about the dude who created the Treasury Department sounds yeah. like a really yeah. good way to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, you see, I mean, I'm the exact opposite. I'm the guy that had read Chernow's book when I heard this is being turned into a musical. Well, of course, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot. Of <laughs> Look, one of the one of the greatest books I've read in the last like ten years was it's just called Cod. <laughs> oh yeah, those are that's Cod. That one's wonderful. I have that. I, I have a series of books on single issue social justice topics. Salt is another good one. Yes. So is tea and yes. rum. Yes. I have all of those. <laughs> <laughs> Bookcase down the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea how much the availability of salted codfish had to do with the early Catholic Church. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and some of the some of the feast days and celebrations and all of that. How much of that was protectionist towards the cod fishing industry? My bookshelf is almost like my fiction books are all on my phone. My nonfiction, uh, my, my, my bookshelf behind me is mostly RPG source books and yep. uh, nonfiction <laughs> histories. Fiction is in the living room. The uh, nonfiction is in the hallway next to the bedroom. And I have the entire shelf of those single, single episode, single issue social histories, as well as I have two shelves of people behaving badly, royal mysteries. Aaron and I both, we, Aaron and I have to call our book collection because we have several multiple copies of books about piracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, so who wrote Salt? Oh, shit. Know? It's the same author did most of those books we just mentioned. Well, so um, I, I, I'm wondering if it was published before or after all those, uh, like when all those Jared Diamond books were popular, like um, Guns, Germs, and Steel. and the third. At the same time. I think yeah. that was about the same time, yeah. Yeah. Guns, Germs, and Steel was a really interesting read. It's not, <laughs> I wouldn't, it's... Accurate, I wouldn't say. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. But the thing about Jared Diamond... Oh, the, the, the guy's, this, isn't he like a bug expert or something weird? Like, he's not actually... <laughs> I, I okay. Want, I want to say he's like a linguistic anthropologist. Yeah. So he's, Cod, he's yeah Cod, really... Cod is Mark Kislinski. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, right. Rum... Is Ian Williams? Yes. Flushed: How the Plumber Saved Civilization is W. Hodding Carter, which is all about the history, the history of plumbing and how the how the Roman Empire fell because they gave themselves lead poisoning. Yeah, that um, guy was a plumber. Scurvy. In an academic. Yeah, <laughs> scurvy. Um, the true history of tea, which explains why uh, the Tibetans drink their tea bricked. Oh, I thought it was going to be about drag. I was excited for no. <laughs> uh, Mark Kozlinski also did salt. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Jack Kelly did gunpowder. Okay. Uh, and Gina Colada did flu. Yes. 
Oh, so, 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 listeners, you now have your homework assignment. Uh, <laughs> yep. this, 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 the syllabus has been updated. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fascinating to see how one topic can touch on so many aspects. I also read one about coffee, which I only had on my Kindle and borrowed from the library, where I learned way more about all the horrible things the, Amer the uh, American government got up to in Central America oh, yeah. in the 40s and in the 30s and 40s. Now, um, these, I, well, I mean, perennially. Specifically, the whole, the coffee book touches it a lot of that. And I, that I, again, never touched on in any of my history classes. Yeah. <laughs> An interesting read right now, I would also recommend, um, um, it's a little on the jingoistic side, but uh, The Killing of Pablo Escobar which um, mm. when you watch the news and you read the surface level histories was handled by the Colombian and Peruvian governments. No, no, mm. no, no, no. Also, it is really interesting when you read that book and if you, um, like me, had a Tom Clancy phase. <laughs> it I is, do, Chris, it's okay. This it's, is we're supportive here. Joe, it's clear and present danger. Like you read <laughs> it and you realize that Tom Clancy knew all of this classified information and put all of it in clear and present danger. That is the story of killing Pablo Escobar. <laughs> but, well, it I, sounds like at this point, if we're talking about killing Pablo Escobar, now might be time to shift to talking about the old guard. Oh, the old guard, yeah. Sure. sure. Yes. Because <laughs> the, the primary, the, one of the primary backups in this is that they go around trying to Try, interfering in various wars and conflicts and such and trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So The Old Guard is a, um, it's a movie that's on Netflix starring Charlize Theron and various other lesser actors. <laughs> lesser, lesser known actors. Lesser known actors, yes. Lesser known actors. Actors. Are you not a huge <laughs> fan of Chiwetel Ejiofor? I, I, like, I, I was not expecting, I have to say, like, I was not expecting to be really moved by this movie but the review i, I gave, know god the, the review i gave chris was i was sick with food poisoning after eating spoiled chicken and i still enjoyed this movie between like just barfing my guts out <laughs> so, that's my ringing endorsement yeah okay Aaron and well, i watched it last night and it's something i noticed again with the layers we, we talked about the layers of music in hamilton where like jefferson shows up and he's singing jazz songs because he's been out of touch for the last couple of years. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. else is singing hip hop. You got to move up. Yep. Um, you know, you, you then compare that to, yes, hand to hand combat and everybody's good at using guns. But the first time you see Nikki, he pulls out that sword. Yeah. The fight choreography in this movie is what the music character uh, support is in Hamilton. I'm a huge mm -hmm. stage combat nerd. Yeah. Every single character has a different fighting style that is geared oh, to yeah. and informed by their origin story. The yeah. second I saw Nikki in combat, he dropped the, dropped the gun, pulled out the sword, and I was like, he's a crusader. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, before yeah, no. he even met anyone else. Yeah. And yeah, this... the more you watch it, the more you think, the, the more it becomes informed. Charlize Theron's character does a lot of, I mean, she, yes, everybody's good with guns. Guns are good, guns are handy. People don't have to get close to you if you have guns. Mm -hmm. But she's really good at unarmed combat because that's, mm -hmm. that comes out of ha having various weapons over the centuries. Yeah. When all the other old guard use guns, they're usually using them, in, when they use an auto fire, they're using them in short bursts. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Niall, who is a modern trained Marine is the only character who is always fires single shot. Oh, so, okay. Real quick. We talk about, because that's the name. weapon she was raised yeah. with. So yeah. when you're in combat, you default to what's comfortable, which is why Nikki pulls out the sword and she always goes for the gun. It's got everybody yeah. else's is multi-shot and she's single shot. Take that target, take that target, take that target mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. because it's informed by her character. Yeah. When she takes her helmet off basically after she gets, you know, ganked. And I realized that was Kiki Lane playing this Marine. I was like, what? Oh my God. I love, did any of you guys ever see a, if Beale Street could talk? 
the Barry Jenkins yeah. movie from like no, years I ago. Haven't. Oh yeah, she's phenomenal in that too. Completely unrecognizable. Like it's a, mm -hmm. it's a good. Oh, I love her to death. And, and um, interestingly enough, her character is not in the original source material. No. Yeah. So it's a. So oh. when, when when was the original comic written? Aaron. <laughs> um, I, I didn't check. I didn't check. I didn't check the year, but it's been out for a while. They're on to like volume yeah. three now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah, I would just like Gina Prince Blythewood, who um, I will love her forever, if for nothing else, for uh, 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 for love and basketball. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? I haven't, but I've heard wonderful things about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's phenomenal, and she is just a such a humanist director. And yeah. such a weird choice for this movie, and I love every second of it. Then you yeah. know, yeah, like that was the thing. Yeah, that was the thing that I that I really liked. That like, it was an action movie that like it acknowledged like the actual moral question of like the huge body count of action movies. Yeah, <laughs> well, are you good guys or bad guys? It depends on the century. We try yeah, to do what is right. Really terrible. I have to say there are also some really terrible implications for like immortality. Yeah. It's like like the thing about um, the one character who got locked in like an iron coffin and sunk yeah. and drowned over and over. And it's Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and spoilers, it's implied that like there's gonna be a sequel and she's gonna be the antagonist, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It would have to be, because yeah, the one the one character who betrays the others because he feels alone and wants there to be more immortals uh because he fucked up they're like we're just going to shun you for a hundred years yeah. so he's drunk and in despair and he's now encountered this character who is pretty much absolute kookaluch and probably right. blames andy for what yeah. happened to her yeah. so that sets up the antagonistic very nicely yeah. um the brilliant move yeah, an aspect I liked of this, and again, I, you know me, I'm always trying to draw parallels between the movie, was, you know, we, we, we respond to art because it touches on deep, either deep truths or tropes, depending on whether it's well done or badly done. And both this movie and Hamilton have at their source, am I doing the right thing? And what yeah. am I doing with my time? Yeah. Why do you write like you're running out of time? Why do you, it's, it, yeah. if it's my time, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And then, so they don't even know the good they've done. Yeah. Until the, at the, again, spoiler alert, <laughs> these, char these characters have been interacting, you know, as a combat team throughout the centuries, trying to be on the side of good and trying to do the right thing. And not only just in the conflicts that they've been involved in, but like they end up saving somebody who two generations later comes up with a life-saving treatment for diabetes. Yeah. Right, there's so, that butterfly effect kind of thing. So they discover yeah. that they really have had more effect than they ever knew because they never put the pieces together. Someone put the pieces mm -hmm. together for them. So you could look at that and you could look at someone like Hamilton who is so obsessed with what his legacy is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're not focused at all until they suddenly realize that they have one. Yeah. They didn't know. I mean, they, they've just been yeah. doing what, you know, well, I've, obviously I'm supposed to be doing something with this. Let's try and do good. Yeah. The two and, brilliant touches in this movie, one or three, really. One is establishing early that at some point they become mortal again and they don't know it till it happens. Yeah. So there's yeah. that question every time they go down. It's not is like this going to be the time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not even really answered at the end if um, Charlie Theron's character has become immortal again. I mean, not assume, but yeah. You would assume yeah. there's going to be a sequel. Actually, I assume the exact opposite. Really? Because when when uh, when I'm blanking on the guy from the War of 1812's name, the guy who they shot Booker. Right? Yeah. When when Booker. when when she and Booker leave, he says, "I won't be seeing you." Yeah. Because yeah. they know she's she's mortal again. Right. She's going to continue to lead the team yeah. because uh -huh. that's what she does. Right. But she's no longer immortal, to the best of me. That was that was my interpretation. She says something like, "Have a little faith." I forget exactly what she said. Yeah. yeah. So it's, the second brilliant move was casting Edgia for, who's just mwah, he's just ah oh, love him. <laughs> amazing brings so much humanity to that character. The third right. thing, which is also not in the source comic, that whole thing about how oh they've done so much good throughout the centuries and all yeah. the, none of that 
Yeah. Was yeah. it that damn oh. comic book? No. Well, of, of course, because we are we movie watchers are simple people, and we need to have it spelled out for us. Oh, we see, don't. I, we I, don't I, want. We don't. A, a movie has to end in a. A movie has to end with a an unambiguous something unambiguous. See, I take a completely different angle. I think that's Blythewood needing to find a purpose behind the chaos. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that the thesis statement of this movie is that, like, good actions, like, have positive consequences, like, beyond what you immediately see. Like, that's the point of good actions. Like, I like that, yeah. My 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 absolute favorite one one of my absolute favorite things about this uh, for no, item four uh, is the, um, the 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 contrast between the pharmacist uh, the pharmacist and the scientist. Uh, I yes. jumped I jumped on oh, that yes, as a yes, costumer yes. as yeah. a costumer because yeah, we have yeah, a you, goth you got, got chick goth. in yeah. black yeah. who yeah. helps Andy without asking any questions because that's mm-hmm. what she does. And then we go to the lab and we see the blonde, pale, white-coated ice queen researcher who, mm-hmm. you know, the, the one of the characters looks to her and says, he says something and she says, you think I'm unethical? And he says, I think you're immoral. Yeah. yeah. So the direct, I mean, that was a straight up callback to, you know, color contrast. We're contrasting two direct characters. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, obvious playing mm-hmm. off against each other both yeah. character-wise and costume palette. Yeah. yeah. Right, and so what else did you think of it, Aaron, since you're... Um, well, I mean, I, I, the first time I watched, uh, watched it, I, could, I couldn't stop hearing, uh, noticing all of the parallels uh, between this and Highlander, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but, 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 flip, but gender flipped, uh, where you had, um, you know, Andy, uh, Andy as Ramirez and um, and Niall as uh, as McLeod, uh, to the point where it's like when when Niall is uh, is still at the uh, base camp and her friends are looking at her, uh, giving her the side eye of "I saw you dead." You know, I I, I heard the dialogue from Highlander. It's like she's she's got the devil in her. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I didn't have that as much because again, a time, it's been a while since I've watched Highlander and also I watched yeah, the Italian same. cut anyway. So yeah. um, I, I liked it more as a, like I said, as a, you suddenly find yourself in this position and th- there's no battling over who, who will remain. Yeah. They wow. tend, to, they, they, they pretty much all team up. They don't usually, I mean, they, yes, they end up on opposing sides and they do fight each other. Yeah. Um, which is how we discover mm-hmm. that the that yes they can die because it just happens yeah. that there's a guy on the other side. But, but even when they're fighting each other, they love each other. Yeah. Yes. They yeah. are a family. They are not a this is Blythewood. This is so beautiful where she's just like wants to get to the humanity of it. Where they it, it, mm-hmm. they're 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 buds, they're bros, they're you know, two of them are literally in love, and they all yeah. are just a big, beautiful family. I cracked up at the yeah, we killed each other. Yes, several times. <laughs> it's so good. Several times. <laughs> which, which is what makes Booker's betrayal so strong, is because yeah. he does it because he, you know, they've got each other, and Andy is has always been self sufficient because she's the oldest. And they've always known mm-hmm. her to be that way, and he he feels that being able to create more immortals will help him feel less lonely because he was super traumatized by staying in touch with his living family and watching them die and knowing he could yeah. do nothing. See, what, what, I I, what, I really... what he wanted was one, he wanted to feel like they did something uh, good okay. through being able to cure things for other people. But I also felt like he wanted to die. Yeah, it also, it also felt cure. very suicidal. Yeah. Yeah, there there is a definite death wish going on. I mean, yeah. he's, he he yeah. not at the beginning, but he gets the, the despair gets deeper every mm-hmm. time you see the two the two uh, the two men smuggled up, and you know then and, you know he, he's got that every character has an item, and his is that silver flask, mm-hmm. which again I don't know enough about eighteenth century silver silver work, but that's probably his talisman, as it were. It's his thing he holds on to from when he was alive. Yeah. Um and also but, can we just can we just talk about like 
how shitty his kid was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've had cancer. I can't imagine, like, blaming my cancer on someone else in my family and driving them out of my life. That was a Bla- little fucked up. Well, like, um, but I, I can also see that, again, if, if, yeah. if, with the level of despair that he has, you can see the level of despair that, that you know, his son would have, that, how, why is it that you live and I die? That's not fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, uh, so I can totally see lashing out, out of that, why do you have this and I don't, why can't you save me? You're being a selfish bastard and keeping it to yourself. I can yeah. see that despair coming out and tearing a hole in, in, in his heart because nobody can cut like your family. And also it really, it really sidesteps your uh, bargaining phase when instead of bargaining with God, you're bargaining with dad who seems to be God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, there's a lot there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's his whole little <laughs> garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, yeah. What I, what I want to, what I'm curious to see um, in should should this become a franchise uh, a franchise i is... can't wait for the second one where we find out they're all aliens yeah <laughs> okay you beat me to it you beat... i was gonna i was gonna make that later but uh um, you know I was, I was gonna say you know i'm i'm curious to see what could happen if uh, chances are sharice they're on may or may not be in the sequel because she's Curious they're on. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Might but, have other things to do. I exactly. mean, she produced uh, this though, yeah. right. so I feel like she's invested. Right, but but what I'm curious to f- see, um, and because I because I have seen it multiple times in my life, of uh, you have the the female led rock of the family leaves. What happens next? You know, yeah. uh, with the rest of the yeah. family. And so her it was, was Niles' her, story. Well, yeah, because usually there there is in in most family situations there's usually a female figure that, beco- yeah. that becomes the center, and the implication mm-hmm. is that that Nile is going to Niles going to step into that role. But again, mm-hmm. he's only implied. So yeah. is it is it implied that she is um, kind of like oh, what what is the character's name or not character? It's a historical figure from like oh I, I want to say Bronze Age. Um, England. Boudica? Boudica. Thank you, Chris. Oh, Jeez. yeah. That's what, I kind of thought she was like Boudica, but her name was Andromache, right? Andromache. Yeah. Like yeah. that's Hector's mm-hmm. wife from the Iliad for those yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I, I wasn't sure if that was, because they called her um, it's something of something else. So I assume that was just like her name and she wasn't yeah. supposed to be the original. So yeah, no, I, I but but on the on the big board of butterfly effect, uh there actually is they actually have a title page of uh the Andromache the tragedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They actually that's that's actually on the page there. So that to yeah. me implies that she is ancient Greek in origin. Yeah. which would also account for a lot of her takedown moves, which, yes, she's using a lot of modern, modern martial arts, but they also did mod, model a fair amount of Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, the question... Mm-hmm. A lot of times when she takes people down. The, the, the question would, would be, if you're assuming... I mean, like, I'm trying to remember who wrote that tragedy. Is it Aeschylus? I, I don't remember. The, no, the implication the, in this is that she's an Amazon, because she wields no, a lot of... Yeah. She's an Amazon, yeah. Because, I mean, there's, like... You know, no, we don't really have like history in the sense about female characters. That's kind of like right. the point of, <laughs> yeah, that's kind right. of like the problem of Greek tragedy. Yeah, but. yeah so that, no, she, that, that's why she wields the labrys, which is, was the traditional weapon of the Amazons. Obviously, that one was not the original, but that was obviously, she obviously had that commissioned. Because it, right. was, it was also, that was the traditional weapon of the Minoans, too. It also, the double, double-sided axe also was an early uh, image drawn from the Amazons uh, in the lesbian uh, movement was before, in, in the lesbian liberation movement was, you know, getting a, a, a double-bladed axe tattoo was, was a thing, call, calling back to the, the self-sufficient Amazons. Although yeah. I was thought that it was a lot shorter. Hers was more like a pole arm. Yeah. But at that one point yeah. later in the movie, she does take up oh yeah the fire, fire axe, axe yeah. and she's like all right <laughs> like idiot. this is good enough <laughs> yep. it's close enough it feels right it's got the right weight okay i know what to do with this yeah 
I, because again, the the fight the fight sequences all draw back to yeah their their base weapons. You know, yeah. they're 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 obviously they've picked up stuff over the centuries. Uh-huh. Yeah, but. When it comes down to it, you you go back to what you're comfortable, which is which is why uh-huh. which is why Nile, would, like I said, noticing that she is the only damn character who regularly fight. I mean, the pistols everybody fires single single shot, but all the full auto weapons that everybody's got, everybody else is firing bursts, and she's always single shot yeah. because that is the weapon of her age. And that yeah. is the weapon that, that is she, yeah. as a soldier that was the weapon she trained with, yeah. like the sword was the weapon that Nikki trained with. Yeah. I was just excited you know, the, the relationships between the characters. I mean, I, I think I'm still somehow jaded by like Marvel movies where you have like 25 characters and you're supposed to keep track of their relationships. It was nice to have like a tight group. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, I, did, I did also love, oh shit, what's the actor's name? Dudley Dursley there. Um, oh yeah. The, oh yeah. <laughs> such, such a great villain. Like it's just oh he, excellent yeah. when he's holding the axe I was like falling out of my chair I'm like oh that you're gonna be super effective with that <laughs> yeah. axe, man like he's I'm like, terrified uh, of you all right when he was forced that part like we all know how you're gonna die now yeah, <laughs> yeah. he 100 percent was just like what if Martin Screlly found immortals <laughs> yep. yep 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 big time exactly yeah. yes. And uh, I, I just love that they just keep repurposing all the second tier uh, Harry Potter actors as villains now, and I'm all for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Theron's um, has, yeah. So people have asked her about the sequel. She clearly wants to be in another one. Um, my would my guess would be, given how long it takes, Netflix, it takes a little longer sometimes yeah. to get some of these projects together. Or oh, and also, no one's shooting right now. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> combined with the fact that Theron, one, she has said that she's not going to film anything until there's a vaccine. Yeah. yeah. She's, just, she's out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Also, she does not like to do back to back action films. Yeah. She yeah, likes yeah. to do like an action film every other year at most because, uh-huh. as she puts it, it's very hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Atomic they, Blonde they clearly the worked their asses off training. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and no one had a good time making uh, Fury Road at all. Like they were yeah. all completely miserable. Yeah. What was she? Um, she in? Um, what was the one she was in? Was it Aeon Flux? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was like ten years ago, though. Yeah, that that, that was that was two thousand nine. That was her big breakthrough yeah. as an action star, and mm-hmm. um, the fact that she had a career after that is really a testament to her uh, uh, yeah. skills. Not wrong. That movie is awful yeah, yeah. oh yeah well i mean i i was a fan of the old uh mtv's adult swim original cartoon and i'm like oh cool a hollywood movie where all the characters are incredibly uh, morally amb- uh, ambiguous and do and does horrible things nope standard evil corporation uh. scrappy underdog rebellion so, hey yeah. aaron joe yeah. what is the defining characteristic of aeon flux Leather, le- leather BDSM outfits. She that can climb Aeon dies in every <laughs> episode. Uh, yes. Guess yep. who survives the entire movie unscathed? Yeah. Yep. And BDSM, yes. And BDSM. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to throw it out there. Y'all remember who made Aeon Flux originally? Yeah, the Rugrats guy. guy. The guy who created Rugrats. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it was. I think, I think we talked about that last time off. Uh, yeah, we talked about it at some point. I remember oh, that conversation. Yeah. We yeah. talked about it off camera when we were trying to decide how to torture each other, and then we're like, "Hey guys, let's <laughs> watch good movies." <laughs> so, speaking of which, for next time, if you all are down for it, I'm just going to say we should watch Bill and Ted because next time is my birthday. Today is also Chris's birthday. Just so everyone knows. Right. It's Ooh. it's getting amazing reviews. Everybody's like, yeah, no, it's it's kind of what we need to watch now. Just go in, go in, realizing it's not good, and then it, <laughs> it, it has it has. It a, is a perfect example of what it is. Yeah. I mean, must a movie be good? Like, 
No, exactly. Thank you, Chair, for doing our But podcast. all the reviews of it are amazing. Oh, Everyone's <laughs> like, no, it's not objectively great art, but no. it is It is the movie that needed to follow this franchise. It is the movie we need right now. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it went where it needs needed to go. Sometime, can we just spend an hour talking about Bill and Ted's bogus journey, which is one of the most bizarre art house comedies ever made that no one truly appreciates. So, and, yeah, and Chris, Bill and Ted's bogus journey, I swear to God, is something that is, that it, it, it strikes like Catholics a certain way. Because there's so much like metaphysical oh, speculation. Because it's about like purgatory and yeah. Like, like, yeah. Or maybe just the fact that it's a weird love letter to Ingmar Bergman in the <laughs> yes. form of a. He plays an awesome bass. Yes. Yeah. Well, they, bring, they bring back the same guy, by the way, as yeah. Death. Oh! He, he comes back to play bass because there is, they have to right. assemble the, they have to I, assemble the yeah. perfect band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I love that the first ones they go back to. I think the first they go back to Jimi Hendrix, uh-huh. and then they 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 cast the uh, the founder the, the, in Chinese legend the founder of music I think Li Huan, uh, they cast as a woman. Nice. Right. So the first two they they definitely recognize that modern rock and roll comes out of black people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the origin of it, and they explicitly reference that in that. The first when he has to form this band, the first person he goes for is Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, yeah. and then Louis Armstrong. And yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, they should have got uh, Genghis Khan on bass. Come on. <laughs> but I, I, I love that they 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 cast the, the supposedly the founder of music with her flute. They go back to ancient China, and yeah. they, the, yeah. the character is not specifically male or female in Chinese legends, so they've decided to make her female. Well, yeah. their, their drummer is also like um, just some random. You know, just like just barely um, on kind of our branch of the evolutionary uh, root system. They, there, yeah, it, and it's, they, it's like a, they go they go back and find the first the first musician, and she's a black woman caveman. Yeah, yeah. Nice. of course, like learning at the yeah. college, people. <laughs> like, yeah. You think it yeah. Is. Um, okay, so that's one movie, and I don't know what the other movies should be, and there are four of you, so have fun with that. But I've done my <laughs> job. What are we going to do? Bogus right. journey. Well, I mean, it, it is going to be October, so I think it ought to be some sort of uh, spoopy, uh, spoopy something. Not too, not too scary. I was, uh, I was thinking something from like Hammer, Hammer Horror, where it's um, a a a fucked up version of the well-established things like you know the Christopher the Christopher Lee vampire or Dracula movies uh, might be fun or. Or the Frank, let's make a Frankenstein movie without ever having read Frankenstein because, you know, that's, everybody knows well, the story of listen, Frankenstein. Listen, has anyone because we're actually... Gonna get, we're going to get this, the, we're going to have a meeting about the movie and we're going to throw out ideas and the guy who turns out, who ends up throwing out the best ideas in the script meeting is Jimmy Sangster and he's a PA and they say, you know what, why don't you write it? Yeah. Listen, like, has anyone ever made a faithful adaptation of Frankenstein, though? Yeah, Rocky Horror Picture and, Show. And, like, should you actually? Because, like, I love Frankenstein, but, like, it's not filmable in the form that it is. <laughs> like, so I mean, so the, the horror of Fran- <laughs> the, but the Hammer Frankenstein has, like, the Baron mar- being a child prodigy and marrying his cousin and then trying to murder his tutor because, of course, he does. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and and his, his mistress, and, 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 yeah, killing his mistress, which is, of course, also totally, totally in the, yeah. Well, I mean, so so we could do one of the Hammer Horror flicks, and I'll, I will I will find one that's available uh, av- available on like Amazon or or yeah. whatever. Or or we I mean or I'm I'm sure I'm sure there is some quasi legal um, mm-hmm. place where you can oh. watch like um, Rocky Horror. Uh, or what or, about even just having everybody watch like next week's whatever the hell is on Spinguli next week? I don't know what's on. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know either. Oh, don't know. I, oh, I, by the way, I, Joe, I was terribly amused. You were the first, but not the only person to text me last night and tell me that <laughs> Night of the Lepus was on Spinguli. <laughs> it's okay, you guys, Sarah and Chris, you need to at least look this movie up just to see the amazing like <laughs> scale effort, scale efforts mm-hmm. going on. The I I it's, saw like the last hour of it. The premise is essentially that like these giant rabbits 
Are Someone destroyed. is experimenting to find a vaccine, uh, and they experiment on rabbits, and they the uh, they grow giant. Yeah, sort mm -hmm. of giant. And so it, it's all just like rabbits, like a giant group of rabbits destroying models. That's basically the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, and 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 they <laughs> that are, sounds amazing. And I have I have I work in rabbit rescue, so I know enough rabbit body language to go. The, those are all mostly just vaguely irritated rabbits because somebody just off camera is poking them in the butt to make them move. <laughs> At various oh. points during the movie, the the rabbits are anywhere from knee high to the size of a Volkswagen, yeah. depending on the set sure. piece that they're yeah. in. For there is also a, a an extremely unconvincing transition between a guy, a, a rabbit leaping to attack a guy, transitioning to an some poor bastard in a really awful rabbit suit with red paint on the mouth. Uh. It's just. And it, the stars of this movie uh -huh. are DeForest Kelly from Star Trek <laughs> and Janet Lee from Psycho, who okay. apparently nice. both had rent to pay. <laughs> Don't we all? I, <laughs> Can I, I, love make this, a I love this movie with a burning passion. Yeah. But Can I make a, a, a hammer horror suggestion for next week? Because sure. I just did a quick Google and I found out that it's all on YouTube. There's a 1970 uh, adaptation of Carmilla. Uh, I kind of think we should do that. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, I, 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 I'm I'm down. Send, send, send everyone the link so we can. Enjoy Carmilla, it. Yeah, yeah, Carmilla, the the ostensibly first erotic lesbian vampire. Yeah. I mean, I've I have actually read the original novel. It is pretty gay. Yeah, I, I, I've, well, I've I've read large parts of it. There, there's there, uh, there's there's also I don't know if anyone else has a copy of it, but. Another really well done uh, vampire movie is The Hunger with Catherine Deneuve, Susan Sarandon, and David Bowie. You just know because um, you were going, you just thought of that because you were going through my DVD collection yesterday. Well, yes. <laughs> but, um, and also David Bowie. Yes. yes. I know you said yes. that. I'm just repeating it. <laughs> well, what if I'm going to, I mean, honestly, while I do really want to do the, you know, do a, a horror movie, if we're going to, if the point is to talk about movies that speak to each other, can we do bogus journey and then and then uh hey, i am i am happy to watch some or all of the bill and ted movies i have no objection to that because <laughs> I, I mean I, that would that i think would make a more interesting podcast because of the time difference between them Listen. i imagine that there, there's probably a lot to be mined from that watching I'm them Listen, together. I'm a classic bullshitter. If you want me to find a connection between these, I'm sure that I can. <laughs> yeah. like, you give me any two random pieces of media, I will find something. Oh, yeah, you, Aaron last night was like, I kept going, pause, I got to write this down. There's a comparison with Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, we can come back, maybe we come back to Bogus Journey, too, because I feel like we could also, you know, we could watch, like, The Sign, The Seal, too. I mean. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it's. What, it's you all don't own it? I've got it on DVD. I do too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because like, um, there's this guy who I come into his class and teach research methods to sometimes, and he does like a film appreciation class. And he does stuff like that where he'll have people watch like a recent movie and then he's like, okay, let's watch some random shit from like 1945 that even your parents didn't see. And mm -hmm. it can, it, it, it does help elucidate those. Do not. Talk about Ingmar Bergman as some shit from the, what, dude? I'm think about oh, no, okay, no. people who are not people who did not spend like ninety percent of their childhood in movie theaters probably don't necessarily know who that is. Even <laughs> oh, by the I, way, I, next I week's Spengoli like is Doctor Cyclops. <laughs> yeah, I so, like the title. <laughs> um, the or, the uh, still the still image on the screen is fairly alarming. Some bald dude with weird gla weird goggles on. <laughs> hey, Aaron, for Halloween proper, speaking of DeForest Kelly, should we inflict on all of the rest of these poor innocent people why Star Trek doesn't do holiday episodes anymore? <laughs> I forget which I, I forget what your paw. Cat's paw. Cat's paw. Oh god. The worst oh, god. Star Trek oh, no, episode no, no. ever. The I, only I, holiday I, episode they ever did. I like so my bad. friends. I will not make them do that. <laughs> <laughs> Every, See, I when I used to run Northwestern's B Movie Festival, I did the triple feature of Star Trek actors need to pay the rent. 
because oh, nice. William <laughs> Shatner was in Kingdom of the Spiders, and DeForest Kelly was in Night of the Lepus, and Leonard Nimoy was one of the, it, it was a movie serial that was recut to a movie called Zombies of the Stratosphere. Yes. He plays one of the aliens. <laughs> Was that before so, or after Leonard Nimoy put out all of those um, poetry books? It was before. I was going to say, was he like was when he was just starting as an actor. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yeah, Star Trek actors still need to pay the rent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, 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 uh, what did I just forget Kirk's real name? Um, William Shatner. William Shatner also starred in the only film ever made in Esperanto. Yep. I was about to bring that up. Yep. <laughs> 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 okay, so for, for, for background, you guys, Chris and I, like, for some reason, our school district growing up thought that everyone was going to, like, speak Esperanto in the 20, <laughs> 2010s, and yeah. so, like, all of us had to take Esperanto, and they wheeled <laughs> out this, like, crotchety ass, I don't, this guy, he could have been 60, he could have been 95, but he was, like, a <laughs> language professor at SIUE, and they brought him straight into, like, grade school classrooms to teach kids Esperanto. Esperanto was also big in the early Spanish circles in the in the 40s, because in fact all the the original San Francisco uh, science fiction society people that originally had the first Worldcon uh, all had Esperanto nicknames, including Moroja, who is the first cosplayer. Nice. Interesting. That's a weird connection. Moroja yeah. made she was dating she was dating Forey Ackerman at the time, and she made him a jumpsuit from uh reminiscent of the movie things to come so I, so, I guess so she is she is in the history of fandom the first cosplayer nice. <laughs> so I, I guess it's just all tied into that weird like speculative sci-fi utopia thing yep yeah mm -hmm. okay. that's so that that's where the, yeah that was very popular in fantasy circles because that was again that's where people were thinking that that you know we were going to of course, there's also a lot of hugely problematic, you know, eugenics and all of that going on at the same time. Right. But yeah, right. All right. I so I, I, I still have, can't I sit through Lensman. I have an idea. We could either a go with Carmilla uh, for the spoofy, spoofy hammer horror thing, or uh, um, or if we're going like, uh, uh, or or we could. Uh, uh, stay on brand or go on brand for this season and go with um the the rocky the rocky horror picture show uh or, oh, i don't think any of us need to see it anymore <laughs> we can talk yeah. about it though i mean yeah. have all of us been to like a live i mean i i know most of us. i no it. longer have my tap shoes but yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was in a cast in high school did we all get hazed <laughs> Has anyone been hazed going to like a public performance? No. <laughs> oh. No, I, I I went straight into a cast. See, when when I when I moved to Cincinnati, I went to see it, and I went to see it with one of my friends who had never seen it in person ever. And they drew, they took a stick and like drew a V on his head for Virgin, and they made him like go up to, on the stage and answer questions. It, it was it was horrifying. Yeah. My first night in Illinois, when I first came to Chicago, first came to Northwestern, and my father left me at the dorm, and I met some people that night, and I ended up going to the Biograph to see Rocky Horror that night, my first night in Illinois. Yeah. That's a lot. The, uh, About 15 of us in a station wagon. Uh, in, in, in U City, when I was uh, in junior high or high school or whatever, they, we used to, there used to be two art house movie theaters. There was the Tivoli and the Varsity. Mm -hmm. And the Varsity is where they had the night, uh, the Saturday night, midnight showings of Rocky Horror. And to give you an idea of what a dump uh, the Varsity was and how, and, and how perfect it was for Rocky Horror, you know, concrete slab floors and like, um, and, and, ball, and like ballpark metal seating. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. that's what the four hundred had, uh, and in, including bonus rats. Yeah. So, <laughs> so 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 at the end of the night when there was all the toilet paper and and rice and so on and mm -hmm. and toast, you know, they just had to fire hose it all off. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah but, but the the four hundred, which is about a uh, half a mile east of us, uh, when the biograph turned into a fully art house, uh, the four hundred was showing it before they split into like five smaller theaters now so but that's where that's where we used to go uh, after college 
So but you guys favorite have... Rocky Horror stories. I can tell them both real quick. One, both of my parents worked at the Roxana, Illinois City back in the would have been the seventies, I guess. And um one night only they did a midnight show of Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh they had to bring in the Roxana Police Department to uh, make sure everybody got out okay because the locals were deeply alarmed at what looked like some sort of sex cult gathering <laughs> in the middle of their small Midwestern town. All right, I, 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 I think, think we, I think we have our like, answer um, for, for, next, for next episode. What's that? Carmilla and Rocky. We have our answer for next week's episode for, for, the, for the pairing. But my other personal favorite, though, was that, so I always used to go to the midnight shows at the uh, the Warenberg Theater in uh, Fairview Heights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We would go every week for the midnight show. And uh, we kept requesting Rocky Horror Picture Show. And finally, one night, you know, there, there, uh, uh, a local comic book shop held it and would do uh, giveaways and trivia questions before the movie. The yeah. manager of the theater came out one night to apologize. He's like, hey... I know everyone keeps asking about it. Our insurance policy specifically forbids us from doing midnight shows of Rocky Horror Picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm, I'm looking at the calendar, you guys, and uh, we're actually going to have three shows, or we're going to have three new, three editions of this podcast, not counting this one before Halloween. Okay. So, so we can so turn about them. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to? He wants to. He, we all want an excuse to watch the new Bill and Ted. So you want to do the Bill and Ted yeah. compare and contrast yeah. next time? So do we want to do should, two Bill and Ted? Should, Is that what we're we saying? Just do, should we just do all three then? What? Why the hell not? Why the hell not? Ever. I mean, that's, that's a lot. But like, if we're going to do two, we might as well just do all of them, well, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. at, at, at worst case scenarios, if somebody doesn't have time to watch the movie, there, there's Wikipedia to, to cheat, uh, to, yeah. to do the yeah. cliff notes. Uh. Yeah, and the- See, I, I was just thinking the specifics of two and three speaking to each other across 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, the first one is, I feel like we could watch the first one maybe way down the road with a different time travel movie because it's yeah. kind of, it's less metaphysical. Well, Joe, that. you and I have memorized the first two movies forwards and backwards anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll make sure to take like a sedative before the next podcast because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, we'll, yeah. so watch so... watch the original Bill and Ted paired with um oh fuck what's the name of that like uh really low budget like um primer uh, prime, primer primer yes <laughs> <laughs> that is what Bill yes, and Ted primer <laughs> yes because we had someone recommend that I would totally do that. I haven't actually seen it. I think that would actually be kind of great. I haven't either. I, yeah. Okay. That's the thing you're like missing out not seeing Cat's Paw. <laughs> the Star Trek episode ever made where they're being hunted by a giant cat that is this cat in this set. Fluffy. Fluffy and cute. Just yeah. It's a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fluffy <laughs> kid. Although there was a installation at the Museum of uh, Modern Art in Chicago where somebody did a cat skeleton in relative scale, a sculpture of a cat skeleton in relative scale to a human being being a mouse. Yeah. Walking into okay. that room was a visceral experience. I felt <laughs> the need to scurry. Uh, that sounds like yeah. Damien Hurst. I wonder who that was. I don't remember. I just, I felt the need to scurry under something. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's, an issue, there's an issue of uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman that that would be very appropriate for that um, that uh, that installation yes. called "Night uh, D Dream of a Thousand Cats," where, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but either read it or especially listen to the uh, audi uh, the audible uh, dramatization of that issue because it's it's so good. Um, oh wow! Oh, it's uh, it's um, the guy's name is actually Catalan. That's uh, Mauricio Catalan. It's called okay. Felix. That is very horrifying. I'm going to send the link. You're right, Wendy. I, I wish I had seen that. Oh, my. Speaking of things you wish you'd seen, if we're going to watch Rocky Horror, I must confess, when I was young and idealistic in college and running a film, film society, I thought, well, you know, there's a sequel to Rocky Horror. Nobody's ever heard of it. This is going to be great. I'll show it. 
There's a reason nobody's heard of it. It's terrible. <laughs> 13 people showed up. Six of them were my friends to make fun of me. <laughs> As penance, I was assigned to hang the one sheet over my bed for a quarter. <laughs> In college. Richard yeah. O'Brien staring at me over every morning when I woke up. I, I mean, it's, it's awful. Shitty sequel uh, connoisseur. I am aware mm -hmm. there is a sequel. Even I haven't seen it. Don't. Yeah, don't. I have Just, that. just <laughs> don't. It's called shock treatment. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, just don't. What was the one we were talking about, uh, Chris? That had that has. Um, oh, what, what the hell is it called? Uh, Repo. Oh, you Repo Opera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repo, Repo the Opera. Yeah. yeah, that one. That one's pretty gory, though. I, I have you or Sarah seen that? I, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I will watch anything with Anthony Head in it. That's my. Well, record. if you're gonna do that, what was that? What's that musical about? The, the zombie holiday musical that Sean and loves so much, Anna and the Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. If, if, uh, uh, Chris, if you like Anthony Stewart Head, um, last night I watched, um, which I haven't watched since uh, I was a freshman in high school, um, A Prayer for the Dying with Mickey Rourke, Bob Hoskins, um, uh, Liam Neeson, and a very young Anthony Stewart Head as thug number three. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it, 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 it had him and Mickey Rourke in it. You think I don't own it? I'm sure it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I, 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 I watched it as an experiment to see if it aged well, and it is fine. It is good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like we'll have plenty of options for the Halloween episodes, and maybe in the notes next time we can just all figure out. Yeah. 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 Because I, I do like, I like Rocky Horror. I like Sarah's idea, too. I, I would enjoy watching just some, you know, vampire movie of yeah. mm -hmm. Ernest oh, stupid, I, stupid. I love vampire and island sets. Oh, fuck. Do you want to watch Twilight? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, no, uh? Yes. But didn't we, um, did we talk about, when we were talking about the Omegaverse, did that grow out of Twilight? Fandom? No. no, it oh. didn't. It actually grew out of supernatural fandom. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it no, it grew out of supernatural because there's like a heavy werewolf element to supernatural. Yeah. I've never watched supernatural, so i I'm not an expert on this part of it, but like, yeah, it grew out of um uh supernatural fan fiction. Um I think it was actually supernatural RPF because um if this was like really early days Supernatural where you were uh, like before Castiel showed up. So like if you wanted to write a uh, gay fan fiction about Supernatural, your options were write about the actors or incest. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> a, a late yeah. friend of mine ran a convention, a small short lived convention called Wincest Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it, th like that was definitely happening. Like yeah, there was a lot for sure. of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, like, this is the friend who said, would you like, you know, she's writing a lot of fanfic. Would you like to read some? And I said, no. And she said, why? I said, because you're going to ask me what I think of it and I'm going to tell you and then we won't be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I think Supernatural might be the only show that like the writers of the show are clearly reading their own fanfiction. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's they, a lot they, of so. they totally went to a con. Yeah. <laughs> See, and they're like, but we're brothers. Yeah. So, Don't they yeah. know that? <laughs> they, yeah. they even made that joke in the show. Yes. When the herald, when the herald of God, when a herald of God, uh, you know, basically God shoved everything was, that was actually happening to the brothers in his head. And the only way he could keep his sanity was to write, uh, write the stories. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's 320 yeah. episodes of that show. That's seasons. that's why I I never got into it as I don't know where to start. Yeah, and and they have yeah. a habit, and I understand that after the first several seasons, they did some unfri unfortunate fridging of female characters. Yeah. Oh, that was always a big problem, from what I understand. Like from like the first season, probably. Yeah. yeah right. I I was on Tumblr in like 2012, which was like Pete Supernatural time, but I never got yeah. into it because like, honestly, that fandom was always on fucking fire. And I was like, <laughs> yes. nope, I'm good. Yeah. But, like periodically would just look over and be like, I'm like, mm, there is like, 
I don't know, some kind of bias here. I don't remember the like actual name of the bias, but like you only ever hear about like shit that happens in in fandoms you're not in if it's like really good or really bad. Yeah. I miss like, meta I miss meta quotes on Live Journal because that was always yes! great. Oh for that. yep. That is oh, how yeah. I discovered author Sarah Reese Brennan, who has I love her. Oh my god, yeah. That's how I discovered her writing is I discovered her yes. on she because she was researching her books, uh the the oh the Damon's lexicon. And she yeah, was looking yeah. she was looking around. I I adore her. She oh, she's was looking, incredible. She yeah. was looking around for a location for her her, you know, to set this garden in her head. She's wandering mm -hmm. around a, a a town in Ireland and her and she's on the phone with a friend and she's like, and it's great, and there's a garden, and there's there's a wall, and there's a fountain, and, there's, and then there's a guy, and he's on his phone, and he looks really upset. And her friend's like, that's because you're in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah also once thought it was the, the, the her fire, her, her in, in Ireland, her, her gas fireplace went out and it was cold, but she didn't have any matches. So the thing, the reasonable thing to do I love her, but she's a complete airhead sometimes. Yeah. She decided that the way to do this was to take a piece of folded up newspaper, put it in the toaster until it caught fire, and carry <laughs> the flaming newspaper into the living room to light the grate. Yep. She did not actually set her kitchen on fire, but it came very close. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in other words, so, she invented that move from uh, the Bourne identity. Yeah, she. So yeah. that's where I discovered her, and that's where I discovered Shauna McGuire when she was still in the fanfic mm -hmm. minds. Yeah, because they were both regularly on Metaquotes. Yeah, I was on Metaquotes once, yeah. and I was so <laughs> proud of myself because I wrote a pseudoscientific analysis of Cloverfield, oh. yeah. the, nice. the feeding mechanism of the giant space flea and its effect on human metabolism. <laughs> <laughs> as to why do people explode when they get bit by the space lights, space lapse. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was enough scientific bullshit that it ended up on Metaquotes. It's yeah. like my, my proudest moment. Yeah. Yeah, before, I, was, I was not popular on Live Journal. I never ended up on Metaquotes. <laughs> I posted it on, a, on a, one of Clea Linda's threads. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, I knew her, yeah. She's, I still follow her on Twitter. She's not on as much because her health isn't great, but she's, yeah. she, her reading her, taking on Twilight. Yes. Oh, that because was so I, good. Yeah. I said, there are things I needed to say about the Twilight books, and I don't want to be that person who rips on the thing they haven't read. So mm -hmm. I, I read all the Twilight books over the course of a weekend of increasingly incoherent live journal posts, <laughs> yep. which eventually ended up just my screaming about, have you ever, do you know what a comma is? Yeah. <laughs> What's the really well-known erotic? September 11th, birthday of Renesmee. <laughs> oh, are, are you, are you, Joe, are you asking about uh, the... Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah. Fifty Shades was, was Twilight Fantasy. Yep. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember what that was. Um, before yeah, it forget, was Defo Twilight fan fiction. Before I forget, you guys, do you all have any interest in watching uh, Lovecraft Country? We, we've been saving it up. We haven't watched it yet because no, we haven't really been in the mental place for it. But yes. I've got a, I have a, my, the, the, as I put it, the, the pirate who lives in my phone uh, has been <laughs> downloading it and s emailing us. Uh, so we, we subscribe to the Eldritch Horror of the Week Club. <laughs> so he emails every week, he, he, he emails me a link to the episode. So we've got them saved. We just haven't watched them yet. There's a, um, someone I'm Facebook friends with is a, uh, a CRT, um, professor at WashU, and she recommended this really great theorist who actually like breaks down every episode and gives you kind of like everything that's going on in the subtext. And as a white person, I found it to be very useful in just watching the first two episodes. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard about it, but I would have to like go look for it. Yeah. yeah. So like maybe we could do that for one of the, we could watch an episode of that for one of the last mm -hmm. Halloween ones. Yeah, that'd be good. The yeah, guy, like I said, they, they, live, they live on this laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just bought the book that the uh, series is based on. I have mm -hmm. it in my Kindle, never got around to it. I, I was bummed to find out it was by a white guy, but apparently he still is writing things that are like representative and interesting. So. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of things on my Kindle that I got and then went ooh shiny and. <laughs> oh, big time. About. Yeah, I just yeah. stopped buying ebooks because I. 
I'm not going to read all of them. Like, <laughs> I got to admit it to myself. It does get to be like a hoarding thing at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. well, I, and also, and I have I have a lot of stuff on on hold through um, through OverDrive and through Hoop, uh, mm -hmm. and every so often my emails or my emails say, "Hey, action action required. Your your book is available." I'm like, uh, I, "Next, next, give it give yeah. it to somebody yeah. else." Because the first thing we got him, first thing we got to establish his residence in Chicago was we got him his Chicago Public Library card. Yeah. Um. <laughs> How does that compare to the county, Aaron? <laughs> uh, I mean, so so far, pretty um, pretty similar. Uh, I mean, they've got uh, they're they're doing better than county uh, in that they are actually open and not just doing curbside. Oh um, no, I mean, I'm I, I would imagine the Chicago Public Library would be better than the St. Louis County. Yeah. Let me find this person's name so I don't forget. So those of you who have experienced Tumblr back in its days when it was a thriving yes. thing, yeah. are you ever on Twitter and you see something happening and you're like, oh, these are Tumblr refugees? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How to deal with them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like yes. the worst. I, I was never, I was never a Tumblr fan, but I, I live in Chicago, so I was watching DashCon implode in real oh, time. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was such a fun weekend. When that and it took two weeks for the first person to cosplay the ball pit. <laughs> the implosion of Tumblr has been terrible for online discourse because oh, it's yeah, awful. Are yeah, in the wild now. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's not good. Like, yeah. when you see someone just like, like sometimes I'll see random takes like sixty-year-olds dating fifty-year-olds are pedophiles, and I'm like, oh no, you 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 can't talk about that in in the real world. <laughs> that, that's a Tumblr conversation. Yeah. No, I am I am on fandom Twitter, which like mm, can't wait till we find our next social media platform because like. It's it's bad. It's not a good I, platform for that. Like, I, I, my, we're all my, making do. We're all making do, but like it's not good. <laughs> my my Twitter feed is primarily uh, creatives, uh, like you know the authors and such. A couple of politicians and a couple of uh, uh, black influencers that I've made the effort to you know pop my bubble as it were yeah that's but, my main no i'm talking like i'm deep in the paint on like actively writing fan fiction in threads twitter uh, uh you know you see i i well, i'm deep in there <laughs> I, I i mine's more like what is chuck wendig yelling about today oh yeah no i'm still on like messy fandom twitter yeah uh no i, I don't got time for that <laughs> oh no it's I'm it's on terrible. a con com. I don't have time for that shit. I have to oh, do no, it in real life. Oh, no, I get life. it. No, like, I'm a <laughs> hobbyist fan. You're, like, you're, like, in pro fandom now. I'm, like, still hobbyist fandom. I'm, like, doing things that spark joy, which, like, is difficult sometimes because, like, yeah, it I, is a tire fire. But, like... I, yeah. I am the treasurer of a convention that yeah. was one yeah. of the first ones to decide yeah. to go virtual. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we're trying to figure out how that's going to work by stealing everyone else's ideas. Well, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah we, there, we have a, there's a mascot. No. There's a mascot. Yeah, there, there's a mascot for Capricorn. I was like, hey, okay, well, since we can't have the ma uh, photo opportunity for, uh, for Capricious, how about uh, we have like uh, zoom, zoom wallpaper background, so you can virtually. I'll make a ma I'll make a mask for the mascot, and you know, yeah. we can put yeah. it in the background, and we can have a guy, so somebody, come into the social threads on Discord and pretend to be the mascot, and he speaks only in emojis. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron attended um, DC Fandom yeah. the same afternoon I attended panels at the NASFIC from mm -hmm. like literally across the room from each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was interesting to compare the two virtual fanish experiences mm -hmm. because mine was messy and fan run and interactive and a lot of fun and his was slickly produced and a little fake. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a glorious day long TV commercial for all things DC. It's a- um, mm. yeah, Whereas yeah. we were, I was on a, I was watching a, a panel about legalities and monster hunting. 
<laughs> that sounds fun. Like yeah, sound if, if, if you exorc if if your if your house is haunted and you exorcise them, is that an illegal eviction? Yes. Right. No yes, knock that's, monster those are the conversations I want to have. Yes. Yeah. It was yes. it was a fabulous panel. It all had people people who had you know legal experience or lobbying experience or experience <laughs> with legislation. I, I'm, talk I'm, about well, if a vampire right. oh, yeah. goes into law and becomes a judge and gets a lifetime appointment. Yeah, what do you yeah. do? I, I love I love those sorts of uh, panels. Like I forget what the name of the group is, but there's a a group of lawyers who do panels uh, where they do mock mock trials of Spanish things like you know the 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 the, the court martial of Poe Dameron. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a lovely long online thread by a group of law students debating the legal provenance of the One Ring based on what they know of Middle Earth law <laughs> and and corresponding um, early early medieval law. Is this, uh, like, uh, is this like because the ring is going up for auction or is it <laughs> well, like who t who technically owns it at yeah. what point does Gollum can can he be seen to have abandoned it or is it <laughs> does it still belong to the lion of the Sildur even though it was taken because the Sildur declared I will take this as an heirloom of my house and Gollum never stated that when he found it so it's a whole long thread about the legal provenance of the One Ring, and it's it's, it's nerdy. That's incredible. It's almost as good as the thread about whether zombies are kosher. Look, you know, <laughs> manipulation of Rohan was one hundred percent legal because possession is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> 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 but we'll, we'll end on that terrible joke. We're gonna, and, and, and I also just want to go back a few minutes and point out Sarah's casual Marie Kondo reference and applaud that. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yes. No, that's that is genuinely how I am treating like hobbies and free time activities. Like, does this spark joy? And if not, out of here. Yep. Well, well, yeah, I got, I mean, I, I, I got yeah, too I, much I, shit I have to do that sucks. I got like four different things that cause executive dysfunction. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, it's like it's like I uh, of the fo of the fandoms I follow, I love I, I I pay attention to like stuff like fan art or mm -hmm. uh, or co or uh, fan art cosplay fanfic and so forth. But in terms of online discussion about a previous episode, nope. I stare. I stare no, way no, the yeah. Don't read the oh. don't read the comments. Yeah. Je no, Je no. Jenny is deep in the 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 fandom discussion of Critical Role, and uh, they. Uh, it's, they a, are it's, a, it's a garbage fire. It is, it is. It's a huge trash fire. fire. Yeah, no, I I very carefully curate my my fandom Twitter uh, Twitter feed to the point where like I don't ever see like the actual bad takes that are happening. I just see people reacting to the bad takes, which is maybe not great. Because then I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Like suddenly yeah. everybody's like, I'm appalled, and I'm like, about what? Yeah. That's that's how I found out about the big kerfuffle in Romance Landia. Mm -hmm. But on the other yeah. hand, that's also how I discovered Chuck Tingle. So you know, yeah. uh, I, I mean, yeah, swings and roundabouts. No. Yeah. I spent 45 minutes yesterday on just regular Twitter trying to figure out whose dick pic everyone was talking about. It was oh <laughs> yeah, it was Chris Evans. Yeah. He accidentally uploaded his own nudes to Instagram stories. Which, but, like, yeah. listen, that's, it's amazing that that's maybe, like, the first time that has happened. Right? Yeah. Well, uh, I was going to say, considering there was a whole meme around America's ass uh, after, yeah. after yeah. Endgame. If I looked like Chris Evans, I would not wear <laughs> clothes. That's, yeah. 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 No, right. never again. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm pausing on that because <laughs> we really need to stop recording now. I know. God, I gotta go and get ready for work soon. Bye, guys. All right, you guys. That's it for season four, episode eight: Who Lives and Who Dies. Thanks to our hosts, Joe Colburn, Chris Knetzer, Sarah Jane Connor, Aaron Rob, and Wendy Rob. Join us next time as we dive deep into the most excellent and assuredly non-heinous Bill and Ted universe.